In this video, we'll use Astro Pixel Processor to calibrate, align and stack multiple files that add up to a full color data set. As we saw in the previous video, APP is very easy to use when co-adding multiple files. Once again, I'll use APP in its automatic mode as this is the ideal way for people starting out with the program. For this tutorial, I'll be using an uncharacteristically short data set of the wonderful Triffid Nebula, or M20, in Sagittarius. I used the Telescope Live 20-inch Chile 2 reflecting telescope in Chile to capture the data, and because M20 is so bright, I took just two 5-minute exposures for the luminance channel and two 10-minute exposures for each of the RGB channels. As we'll be working with just one session, I'll disable the multi-session processing option. Because we are using sub-exposures that were shot through four filters, we'll leave the multi-channel filter processing option ticked this time. Let's start off by loading this data. As always, I've copied all the sub-exposures into a single directory as it's easier to keep track of everything that way. Note here that the telescope live data has already been calibrated at source, so we don't need to use any calibration frames in this procedure. Once loaded, the images are visible in the file window at the bottom of the screen. APP has conveniently applied color coding to each of the files, making it easy to see which filters we've used. We can now jump straight to the integrate button. Check that the integrate option is set to automatic, which is actually the default setting. The very top drop list contains three choices. I'll go through them one at a time. Integrate per channel. If this is chosen, APP will analyze the fit header of each image and ascertain the filters used for each sub exposure. The fit header contains a lot of relevant information about an image's characteristics. For example, it will contain the length of the exposure, the temperature of the sensor, time and date, and a whole host of other useful information that you can refer to at any time. To view the FITS header, we click on one of the sub-exposures so it's visible in the viewing pane, and then select Header Metadata from the tabs at upper left. Now all the image parameters are visible. Scroll down the menu and check that the correct directory is chosen using the Set Save Directory button and then click Integrate. APP will analyze the files and then, using its automatic setting, provide the best stacking parameters for the images. When completed, the file list will be populated with four new images consisting of stacked master frames for each of the filtered data sets. Looking at the file list, we can see that APP has applied Analyze Stars, Registration and Normalize to the sub-exposures, and also populated the other columns in the file list. Note that APP has chosen the Light 5 Luminance frame to be used as the master reference image for the others to be aligned to by colouring it dark grey. To view any of the master frames, just click on them in the file list. As we would expect, they all look slightly different due to recording specific wavelengths of light through each of the filters. Now we'll look at the second option. I'll start from scratch and reload the individual sub-exposures. We'll choose Integrate All from the Integrate tab's top drop list. What will happen now is that APP will carry out its automated stacking routine exactly the same as before, but this time it will create just a single master image that is made up from all of the sub-exposures. You might be wondering why we would do this. Well, there is a very good reason why. When it has finished the processing, APP will have created what we can call a superluminance frame. In this case, it will appear in the file list called Integration 1, blue, green, luminance, red. It's a perfectly viable procedure to use, especially if working with a small data set like this. 
By combining the data taken through all filters, we can create a very strong image that can be used as a standard luminance master frame that can then be combined with the RGB master images. You've probably realized at this point that the RGB data will be used in both the superluminance frame and the individual RGB master frames, but it doesn't matter. The end result will be better than using a standard luminance frame to create an LRGB image. In fact, it goes even further. To explain this, I'm going to load a different data set taken with the same telescope of M78, a lovely nebula in Orion. Once again, this is another short data set consisting of just three 10 minute luminance frames, three 10 minute sets for the blue and green filters, and just two 10 minute sub exposures for the red filter. I remember being hugely disappointed when I viewed the luminance frames as two out of the three were badly affected by very bright satellite trails. I found that if I created a superluminance frame using all the data, the rejection parameters used when stacking in APP produced a master frame that was totally clear of the offending satellite trails. You can see that they have been totally removed. The rejection routine works much better when the image data set is large, and of course stacking all the files creates a much stronger luminance frame that is then combined with the colour master frames. So far so good, but now we can explore the third option in the integrate drop list. First I'll reload the M20 colour frames. Now we click on the integrate tab and from the drop list we'll select integrate per channel and all. Set the save directory as before and click integrate. This time APP will create a superluminance frame using all the data along with three RGB master frames, as well as what we can call an ordinary luminance frame made up of just luminance data. With these we can create an RGB or LRGB image using either the ordinary luminance or the superluminance master frames. We'll do that in the next video.